Hello everyone, welcome to 2021. <laughs> the look on your face is so good. <laughs> welcome to 21, if you thought it was going to be better, you were sadly wrong. But, nonsense aside, I thought this year would be a really good year to just force myself to do some of the creative projects that I've always wanted to do, but have quite frankly been a coward. <laughs> to try. So this year I've given myself a really big project, as you can kind of see in the YouTube title. Um, I want to create my D&D character, Laura, and I want to like bring her to life. I want to take my character concept of her, which I will put right here, and I want to try and create as much of her outfit from scratch as possible. And I also want to use the opportunity to actually try to draft a pattern for the first time. Um, I also want to work with thermoplastics for the first time, and I want to try making chainmail for the first time. So it means I'm going to change up the format uh, for filming a little bit different. I know I only did two videos back in October. We're going to pretend November and December didn't happen. And <laughs> um, but moving forward with the big projects, I want to also give myself time to actually do it. I'm going to sort of do a slightly more vlog style video and try to aim for like once a month. I thought, what better way to talk about my Dungeons and Dragons character than with Genie D's Dungeons and Dragons tag. I have my wonderful snarky husband behind camera helping me. Sorry. He just knocked my camera. Whoops. <laughs> and he's gonna ask me the questions and be my peanut gallery. And we'll see how this video style goes. You've seen him before. I think they've heard of me. I think they've, they've heard, heard of me. Before. Actually, no, that's right. You they've haven't not seen on, me. You yet. haven't been on camera, but they've heard you. So, <laughs> take it away. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, the question one is: What was your first D and D character? I don't actually remember, but that's why I brought this. I'm a dork, and I have all the characters that I've ever made so far. Um, so I can actually. Oh no, not that one. <laughs> So my first one was actually, oh yeah, I was an elf, uh, and my name is Rowena, because I'm a Harry Potter nerd, and very original. <laughs> oh, I just remembered this character. I know, right? Um, but it was actually made originally uh, actually for Pathfinders, um, and I think it's where the tree joke comes from, is this character. Yes. So I was a... You were a rogue. I don't have my class on here. You were a rogue. I'm, was I a rogue? Yes, because you were there. trying to be all sneaky and stealthy oh, and failing right. miserably. Because <laughs> your rolls sucked. Oh my god. Or they were good one second and terrible oh, yeah, the next. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. I would basically roll a natural 20, and then I'd roll a 1. And then I'd roll high. And then I'd roll up. And then I'd roll a 20. And then I'd roll a 1. Like, there was, there was no in between. I either did really well, or mm -hmm. I really sucked. I'm like last night. Oh my god. I DM'd for the first time last night and none of my enemies or the NPCs that I had written could hit anything. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, Rowena, my elven rogue, was my first character, but I think we only got like, so we went to character level two, so I think we only did like a few sessions. It was like two. Or something, yeah. But Laura, my human ranger, is actually the character I've used the most. Like, we played Pathfinder a little bit, and then we played, started to do Dungeons and Dragons, but never really went more than like a session or two. Uh, but then we joined our current campaign, and I just whipped together this character, because I thought, oh, it's just gonna be like one shot. Uh, we're just gonna be here for this one session. That was what, two years ago? Almost three? Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Time so, goes differently. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really attached to Laura, so I kind of consider her my first character, but technically Rowena, my elven rogue who thinks trees are made of metal, uh, <laughs> was my first. Uh, so question two, which D&D class is your least favorite to play, or do you not want to play? That's a good one, because anytime I have to make a new character, I always try to pick a class that like I haven't done yet. I'm kind of leaning towards Barbarian, but like after like looking through like none of like the archetypes for Barbarian interest me, except for the new Tasha's Cauldron Feywild Barbarian archetype, 
because I like me some craziness. Um, you know what? Wizard. Wizard also doesn't sound that interesting to me. A lot of micromanagement with wizard. Yeah, and I'm not really interested in that. Because you have honestly. to prepare your spells every day. Eh, I don't know. Nah. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go with wizard. I could probably do a barbarian at some point. You hit that. And I would really probably hard. do a monk as well at some point. But yeah, wizard. Wizard is like bottom of the list of classes that I want to play. Speaking of casters, then the question number three is: What D and D spell would you most want to have in real life? Oh man. And my D and D like spell knowledge isn't even that good. There's so many. Is it weird? I want to do talk to plants. That doesn't surprise <laughs> me, and the least from you. I, you know what? I I would love to do talk to plants because I just started gardening <laughs> last year, and I made my first um, I made my first veggie garden. And I actually tried like growing things, and it did really well. But I was really sad with my plants that like weren't doing so well and if I could talk to my plants and know what they need like I would really like that actually Fair enough. either that or no 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 is it or is it a feat or is it a spell that um Colin's bard could do and it was speak with plants and animals um, is that a spell or a feat it, I think it was actually a racial trait damn it okay because I'm like wait no I would totally take speak to animals and plants I mean, turning into a tree would be tempting just because I love that spell. And everyone's like, why did you take that spell? It's so useless. And, and then it came in so handy. It was great. And that is a spell you use with this character. I know! It was fantastic. Turned I basically... We had triggered an avalanche. No, I had triggered an you avalanche. You had triggered an avalanche. <laughs> and uh, one of our friends, his character is like an illusionist. Oh, no, he's, he's like a know. time wizard or it's, something. I don't know. He... Go! Time was a Yeah, he just he looks in and out of time and space. Oh my god, he's like the doctor. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> and he took himself and me and out me of time. Out, but everyone else was close <laughs> to me and we're like, shit, what do we do? There's this avalanche coming. Oh my god, I'm like, my moment has come. I'm gonna turn into a tree. Everyone, hold on! <laughs> So I turn into a tree, everyone grabs on, so they're all like above the snow when the avalanche is over in my branches. They pop back into space and they just suddenly see this, this tree disappear into the snow and they're like, oh, there they are. Uh, question number four. What's your favorite D&D monster? Mimics. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just... They're so funny. Oh my gosh. I just love that they can like turn into anything. Um, and we have a running joke in our table that um, I think the first time we encountered a mimic, um, the rogue screwed up their, I think, lock picking check or something. And so it turned into a mimic and then it licked them <laughs> and did like, I don't know, two like poison damage or I something. Don't remember. This I don't so remember, but it's now. just I just and every time I see like this the the figure of the mimics with just the giant tongue and the teeth and the chest, I'm just they're so funny. I think they're just yeah, it would have to be yeah, mimics. I think they're great. Question five. What's your favorite NPC or villain that you've encountered or created? <laughs> well after last night I wouldn't have had any that uh that I created, but oh man. Gloom Widow? Oh! Fuck, I forgot about Gloom Yo, no, no, okay. No, that's right. I changed my mind. Gloom Widow. Oh my gosh. My. Laura, funnily enough, a lot of my stories could be about Laura because she's like the character I've used the most and that I've been having in a campaign the longest. Um, we had a session where there was a underground, like, sealed room or something it was under a church oh yeah oh, right. it was under the church and in the basement there was like this big you know occult circle and they had uh, determined that uh some like a, a demon or something was sealed there yeah so i'd been enthralled by this uh character but then we'd ended uh that night just after that moment the other two party members had forgotten that they were enthralled but i remembered so I was still under the impression that that spirit was my friend, and I needed to free them. 
And the other two party members had forgotten. So I had actually worked with the DM like behind the scenes. I'm like, okay, when the session starts, I'm gonna do this, this, and this to distract the party, sneak into the church and free her. And that was Gloom Widow. And I did. And the whole party never found, I mean, okay, like the party knew cause metagaming, but like in game, none of the characters knew. Um, and I was possessed by her for like a really long time. Like, so we had gotten like pretty much like the perfect symbiotic relationship. And then when we finally entered the Tomb of Whores, she left me. And so now I think after like the last session that we had, I'm still kind of like dealing with, cause I've had this entity inside me. So I feel like I'm missing like a second half now. And she's great. I really wish I almost died though. Cause that would have been a straight giveaway because Gloomido wasn't gonna let me die. But of course the one time I actually did die in the Tomb of Horrors, she left my body. <laughs> so I died. Oh, thank God Colin had resurrection. That's funny considering the next question is, has one of your characters ever died and what killed them? <laughs> Laura did die once. We were doing Tomb of Horrors, and I failed a saving throw against death, falling into a pit trap. So I believe yeah. they were poisoned? They were poisoned. Um, uh, yeah, the poison was uh, versus death. Yeah. So if you didn't make I, the save. I think I just barely failed. Like, I was off by, I think, like two points. But the funny thing was, is that our DM had been joking, like, the entire time we've been in this tomb of oh you're dead you're dead you're totally gonna die you're gonna die so when he looked at me and went you died i just laughed at him and went no i'm not he's like no for that you failed the saving throw against death and i just looked at him like excuse what no 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 i didn't die i was i was legitimately dead um we had to use resurrection on you that means you were dead <laughs> question seven what's your best natural Funny story. My Ashitaka moment. If anyone's seen Princess Mononoke um, by Studio Ghibli, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, that would be a dog. You need to go see it. It's a really good film. Um, so I was playing a paladin. Yeah, it was a paladin, and we had to go into a bandit camp. Now the rest of the party had found uh, a hole in the fence to sneak in, but I'm in heavy plate, so I can't sneak in. So they go in, battles ensue, and I'm like, oh no, like I need to go in to help my party, but I can't fit through the gaps. So I rolled to just open the front gate. And even though you had said that like it's a super heavy gate and you can't do it, I rolled a nat 20 and you went, okay, fine. You lift up the gate, but it's gonna take you another action to get in and put it down. So I'm stuck standing here, hold, basically a, having an Ashitaka moment, and I opened this gate, um, a sitting duck for any of the bandits who couldn't hit me, and they missed. It was great, because they didn't beat my AC. Never forget that. Question eight, what's your best natural one story? <laughs> Oh my god, which one do I pick? I have You've so got many. a lot. I have so many natural one stories. I would say it's a tie between the trees are made of metal and um, no, it's got to be the, the cow. Oh. It's, it's the cow. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an elf. I can totally like do forest elves. Yeah. I rolled a one. So since I built it up so much the DM was all like, you think the trees are made of metal and you have no idea where you are. <laughs> uh, question nine, what's the highest level you've ever played a character to? That's Laura. I know that's Laura. What are we at? Because we were actually 16. just talking about this. You're level 18. Our DM wanted a break. No, he wanted a break and we decided to do Starfinder. Oh, it was 2019 we did Starfinder. Yeah. Because then it was, we didn't basically, we stopped it in February of last year. Yeah, we Because got I got sick and was yeah. in the hospital at the beginning of the year. It was a great time. And I wasn't feeling like doing it, and then COVID hit, and I was like, well, I guess we're not doing that. Yeah, now we try to, uh, what? <laughs> I'm now to be let in, and now I'm now to be let out. Like a typical cat. Yeah. Next question. 
Uh, I think I answered that question for you. Uh, question yeah, you kind of did. <laughs> what level are you? 18. And blah, 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 blah. Backstory. Yep. Stop hitting my camera. What? Oh my god, the pair of you. Are you going? <laughs> I take that as a no. Nope. <laughs> um, question 10. What's your favorite magical item? Oh my god. Is a bag of holding a magical item or is it like yes. a common item? No, it's a magical item because it's magically enchanted well, to be bought. That's to what have. I thought. I just wanted to check. Uh, I mean, there's so many out there and I know like the magical items that I've actually used has barely even like scratched the surface of the magical items available, but I just... Yeah, a bag of holding, weirdly enough. Um, I know Ginny in her video said uh, Lehman's tiny hut. Oh, and her cool. reasoning made a ton of sense. It almost makes me want to say Lehman's Tiny Hut. But there's just something about the bag of holding that's just... It's my favorite item because I like, depending on what type you have, how much stuff you can fit in the bag. Just because it reminds me so much of Hermione's carpet bag from Deathly Hollows, And I just... Mm. I love... Because then it's like you could live anywhere or you could travel and literally have like everything you own with you just shoved in your bag of holding. Big bag of holding. I'm boring and basic. Question 11. If you had an in real life alignment, what would it be? I don't know. I mean, I guess I would honestly say, like, good. You know, I do like to help people. Like, I believe in, like, the greater good, I guess. And, you know, like, I hold doors open for people. I'm typically very nice, very helpful. Um, I wouldn't say, like, lawful, though. Because, I mean, some, some rules are meant to be broken. Yeah, but you um, follow, I'd say you're lawful good, considering you actually follow, typically, the posted speed limit. And you'll return I'm a shopping cart. I'm not going to admit carts. to not do, hey, okay, no, you know what, the shopping cart thing, that is, there, there's, a, like, a psych, there's a psychology behind that. Oh, I that. believe that. Yeah, like, no, there, there, there's a psychology, it's not a law thing, it just means that you're a decent human being. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't. That, that would still qualify under good. And even take like high school dress code, for example. I broke that constantly. I thought dress <laughs> yeah, code was the stupidest thing in the world and I hate it. Um, but so, you know, like things like that, like, like rules and laws and things like that, I think are, some of them I think are dumb and are meant to be broken. But I mean, you know, crossing the sidewalk when the light's on. I mean, that's that's common sense, because if you don't, if you jaywalk, you have a higher chance of getting hit. I have to say for neutral good, because, yeah, um, I like to think I'm a good person, but some rules are meant to be broken. Mm. Uh, question 12. If you had to date one of your characters, which one would you pick? That's a hard one. <laughs> so I feel like I don't know. <gasps> no, 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 no. You know who I would date? I would date, aha, Kima. I thought I, I was thinking Kima. I would so date uh, Kima. She's my Starfinder character. And I am a Lashunta mystic in Starfinder. Uh, basically, I'm just a nerd. I am a massive, knowledge hungry nerd. Actually, you know what? I kind of. Kima kind of reminds me of Evie from The Mummy. Oh, now yeah. Now that I think about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I would 100% totally date Kima. From Starfinder. Question 13. Is there a character you want to play but haven't had a chance to play yet? I would really like to make uh, like a bare knuckles, you know, punch first, ask questions later type character. Um, make, you know, just like a totally down on their luck bare knuckles Valkyrie or something. <laughs> I don't know. That would be fun. Just, you know, a super simple, not complicated character that's just, yeah, punch first, ask questions later. <laughs> Question 14. Are you a dice goblin or a dice minnow? I am a dice goblin. I. Everyone oh, we know is a goblin. Everyone we know is a goblin. Although, to be fair, we were actually talking about that last night when we were DMing. So I was looking at all my dice and it's like, I'm pretty happy with the dice collection that I have. So if I'm going to buy new dice, I need to really like the dice. Uh, I really have a thing for like the Chess 6 Gemini <laughs> collection because I love the two colors combined. Um, but I have a whole bunch of different colors now, so not only does it have to be a set I really like, but it also has to be kind of like a color scheme that I don't have already. So like, black and red's out. I have a lot of black and red dice. But yeah, dice, dice goblin. 100% dice uh, goblin. Uh, 
Shiny math rocks. <laughs> Click clack magic rocks. <laughs> uh, last question, question 15. What rule or mechanic have you not quite wrapped your brain around? Everything. <laughs> Reactions. I am terrible at reactions and like bonus actions. I always forget they exist and I never remember how they work because I forget they're a thing that you can do. Or even like when I think that I can use a bonus action or a reaction, I can't in certain situations. It's really confusing and I don't get it. And especially like after last night, DMing really showed that I don't really know how that works at all. But, I mean, I just, it's just a matter of, I guess, doing it, and then I'll eventually get, like, the hang of it. Like, the more I use reactions and bonus actions, the more I'll get used to it. Because so I know at first I would have said, like, using spells, but after playing, like, a sorcerer and starting to use more spells as Laura, I kind of got the hang of it, although I still kind of forget about prepared spells. Uh, but definitely reactions and bonus actions. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to check out Ginny's original video, I'll have it in the link in the description below. If you like to play Dungeons and Dragons and you want to give the D&D tag a try, I'll also have the link to where you can download Ginny D's questions so you can give it a try. Um, so next month in February, I'm hoping to have basically kind of like the first uh, like official video with the progress on Laura so far. And yeah. See you guys next time. What to do for an outro? I never know what to do for the beginning or ending of videos. Hi, Jack. Jack, Jack. look at Dad.